Hey guys, Work King here. I got a really good paper to discuss with you today. It is uh, you know, crucial for anybody that's dealing with hard flaccid, but also it's crucial for otherwise healthy people to better understand pelvic floor health, erectile function, and basically you know, how to keep yourself healthy. So we're gonna discuss all that today. So please stay tuned, this is very important. All right, guys, like I said, this is a, a paper. It's called Hard Flaccid Syndrome, proposed to be secondary to pathologic activation of pelvic pudendal hypogastric reflex. I know what you're thinking. WTF does that mean, Hink? Well, we're going to break it down in simple terms, but this paper is absolutely awesome, guys. Like, I, I know I'm a dork, but this is really good insight. Not only does it shed insight on basically new ideas, but also like on old theories. And literally, if you have hard flaccid and you're suffering from this, this could literally be a solution for you that you're not even aware of. So it's very important that we discuss this today. To start, you know, what is hard flaccid? Guys, I made a whole video about hard flaccid, okay? Please check it out if you wanna learn more about the overall, like, general scope. Everything from how to diagnose it, your symptoms, to workup, treatment, etc. I break it down in that paper. Basically, it's when you have, uh, your penis remains in this, like, semi-flaccid, like, literally, like, it's, it's small, it's in like a flaccid state, but it's hard. It's often persistent and it's painful. It can uh, often feel tender as well. Usually occurs in, people's in their, people in their 20s or 30s. What other symptoms can be associated? Things like cold glands or like the actual head of your penis can be cold. You can have constipation, high pelvic floor tone. You can have pain around your anus or perianal pain and even pain with ejaculations, loss of morning erection. Symptoms are also worse when standing as well. This can lead to significant emotional and psychological distress guys I can't tell you how many guys I was in the same boat that literally think that their life is over dealing with this and literally I've had some guys that are messaging me about like the potential offing themselves as a result and so this is a very important topic a very big deal and so what do they bring to the table with this paper well they bring up something that's called the hypogastric nerve they basically say that this is a major contributor to hard flaccid and so what is the hypogastric nerve well here's a picture of it here uh, I'll show you in the green, um, but it's basically, um, it carries the nerve inputs from around the T12 to L3. So for those that don't know basic anatomy, so in your spine, okay, you have your cervical spine, which basically goes from the base of your skull to right here. And then from uh, like where your ribs start, your first rib is technically your clavicle. You have your thoracic spine that goes from here to here, like kind of on your back. I can't show you here. And then your lumbar spine is basically your lower back that leads to basically your butt bone, okay? And so T means thoracic spine, T12. L3 means your third thoracic lumbar spine. Third lumbar spine. And so we're talking about kind of in your lower pelvis here, guys, right above your butt bone. And so why is this important? Well, because they basically hypothesize with this paper that you have increased like sympathetic activity, okay? So all of you guys have, uh, on this channel right now, I've probably seen my other videos and I talk about increased sympathetic activity. So like sympathetic activity is your fight or flight. It causes your muscles to stay in like, or your body to stay in like a contracted, like on alert state. And so I've talked about this before because even things like if you think you have injured your penis, you start sending out this sympathetic nerve fibers or these nerve signals that cause your pelvic floor to tense up and it doesn't allow your smooth muscle to actually relax and engorge with blood. That's one of the causes of hard flaccid just right there on itself is literally just psychologic changes, okay? Causing that increased sympathetic innervation. And what they're saying from this is that um, you can have um, excessive sympathetic activity in that hypogastric nerve that leads to that, once again, unrelenting smooth muscle contraction, okay? So where are they getting this from, okay? Well, when you inject something that's called fetal amine, okay, it basically disrupts that sympathetic signal, you can actually inject that into the the, um, corpus cavernosa and it temporarily resolves the heart flaccid state. I mean, so that right there shows that when you block that sympathetic signaling, you get a relaxation, okay? And so this implies that this hypogastric nerve also plays a role in just maintaining your baseline like flaccid state, okay? So if you do have disruption in this hypogastric nerve, um, it can um, lead to not only irritation in your normal flaccid state, but you can also have changes to your erectile tissue, your bladder, and your rectum. So a lot of guys report like things like constipation, perianal pain, difficulty with urination. That's all because of this hypogastric nerve involvement. 
And you know, I, I have to say that I'm guilty of basically only talking about prior to this paper the pudendal nerve or the major nerve of the pelvis, and uh, you know, I'll put up a picture of that shortly. Um, but it's so much deeper than that. They also talk about something that's called a somatovisceral reflex, okay? And so, you know, well, WTF is that, man? Basically, what it is is you can have this condition where if you alter some sort of like nerve function somewhere in the body, an organ system can suffer from it. So for example, you could have back pain that could actually lead to diarrhea because of that disrupted, like back pain causes an abnormal reflex signal leading to di diarrhea because of basically the different nerve pathways. I don't, I don't wanna go into like all of the different like GI tract stuff right now, but just, just take my word for it, okay? And so basically what they're saying is that you can have an injury anywhere within this surface Circuit, this hypogastric circuit that can lead to symptoms of heart flaccid, okay? So they put up this paper or this image here, okay? This is, you know, probably one of the most important images here, okay? So what you need to see is that there's, this is basically the entire pathway they're hypothesizing in this paper, okay? And so what they're showing is that, uh, so this is like a cross section and so what we call a sagittal view, meaning instead of looking like this, which is the coronal plane, you're actually looking like this, which is the actual sagittal plane. And so you can see in here, and so you can see where there's like the penis, the testicles to the like the lower left of the screen. And then where you see like L2, L3, L4, L5, that's the actual different backbones, okay? And so this is all an interconnected pathway. And so when you're talking about that hypogastric nerve, it involves basically the green and the red that you see up there, okay? So we're not gonna break down like the preganglionic versus postganglionic, but all you need to know is that basically where you see in the green and the red, those are all the different pathways that are involved. And so where you see that like circle and it has a B, that's the bladder, that R kind of in that oblong circle is a rectum. And so you can see that innervation to the bladder, rectum and the corpus cavernosum, that CC right there, is all direct that hypogastric postganglionic, meaning like after the ganglion, more like basically off the spinal cord where the nerves kind of form this cluster. After that, postganglionic, you can see where the innervation goes. But if you also look, you can see kind of at that L2, L3 junction that there's also a branch of that that goes down when we're talking about the pelvic nerve, which is in black, which therefore leads to that pudendal nerve. And so this pathway is integral in basically everything within the pelvic floor, and that's why this is so important, okay? And so part of what they're showing here is that the, um, basically you can see that the pudendal nerve is largely conveys like penile skin sensation. You can have the cavernosal branch of the pelvic nerve, that black nerve, which is largely in like the S2 through S4, or the, the sacral, uh, little sacral vertebra, like S2 through S4 area, those nerve roots. And then you can see like all of those hypogastric, like um, what they call the postganglionics, like after that, that nerve cluster, like where they fan out and how they involve all of that, like we just talked about, okay? So I know I'm losing you guys, or maybe not all of you, but some of you, like why do you care? Okay, this is why you care. This is the important part here, okay? They basically break down heart flaccid into three different regions, okay? Region one, which is gonna be most important for guys that are doing any kind of enlargement techniques, so jelking, et cetera, okay? Or any kind of damage during masturbation or even any kind of injury to the erect penis, like even during intercourse, okay? So if you look at this region one, where you see like this box that is around like the, basically the penis and the testicles, like that is where region one is going to be involved. So when you have that region one involvement, you get like this excess sympathetic activity that, that like signal to stay contracted and not relax from that direct injury to the penis essentially. And so this leads to a specific type of treatments that might benefit you more in this area. So for example, you can use something like obviously Tylenol, ibuprofen, over-the-counter anti-inflammatory agents. Specifically, ibuprofen is an anti-inflammatory agent, but also often certain alpha blocking agents. So that basically that sympathetic signal blocking agent like doxazosin or um, tamsulosin, you can actually have some relief with that. And then there's like the low intensity shockwave therapy. I made a whole video on that. I don't think that that's gonna be particularly helpful. If you wanna pursue that, more power to you, okay? Then they actually talk about region two, where if you look at that square, kind of it's more so in like the, the pelvis and the uh, like perianal perineum area, okay? 
with this, the mechanism that they often attribute hard flaccid from this type of region is actually from like blunt trauma, or so things like bicycling, horseback riding, or even some kind of like accident in that area. And even high tone pelvic floor dysfunction. I'm so tired of very few people, I have to say it is the, the loud minority, but like that people that argue with me about like, oh, pelvic floor hypertonia, that's not even a real thing. Like guys, it's a real freaking thing. You can look it up yourself, okay? But this paper clearly talks about high tone pelvic floor dysfunction. That's why I made my whole video on Kegels, guys. I said, stop doing Kegels because when you are constantly stressing out your pelvic floor, clenching those pelvic floor muscles, you cause hypertonia or hypertone, high tone in your actual pelvic floor. That's exactly what they're talking about with region two hard flaccid. And so if you were doing PE, uh, so any kind of enlargement techniques, you're at risk of region one hard flaccid, and you're also at risk of region two because a lot of these guides and a lot of these like outdated things say, oh, you need to do Kegels, you need to do Kegels. Like you don't just have to blindly do Kegels, and if you do Kegels, you need to do pelvic floor stretching and relaxation techniques, which I talk about in that don't do Kegels video, so just watch that video, okay? And uh, before you guys sound off, yes, there is a role for Kegels. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you have to be careful and it's about balance, but I don't digress, okay? When you do have these, re these zone two or these region two types of hard flaccid, um, then if you actually get some sort of like nerve specific medicine, so specifically the one that I'm most familiar with is called gabapentin or neurontin, but there's also other similar agents. Also sometimes actually skeletal muscle relaxation like um, diazepam can actually cause that muscle in the pelvic floor to relax, relieve some of these symptoms. And then once again, pelvic floor physiotherapy, pelvic floor stretching, and so that can lead to basically decreased in that sympathetic tone, okay? So that's for region two. Then what this paper brings up is zone three. So when you have patients with zone three, they're saying that this largely comes from the cauda equina. So what is the cauda equina? Well, it literally mean like horse's tail in Latin, or at least that's what we were taught in medical school. I'll put up a picture here, but it's at the end of the spinal cord. So the spinal cord ends at like your first or your second lumbar vertebrae, okay? So in the upper portion of your lower back. And then after that, you have all of these little nerve fibers that kind of mirror a actual horse's tail. And so that's why they named it the called equina, but when you have involvement in this region, you tend to have a more treatment resistant hard flaccid, okay? Typically what happens is you have a patient and you've done these treatments for the region one and the region two and it doesn't improve. And then what they commonly, what they show in this paper is that if you do imaging, you can often see pathology in this area, so specifically an MRI of the lumbar spine and pelvis. And so you can do actually specific nerve testing in these areas to see if there's actually like radiculopathy or like nerve dysfunction in this area. Then they bring up a case report, and this, I literally had a client with this exact same thing, and unfortunately his case did not go the same, and I'll explain why in just a minute. So they show that there's this 18-year-old guy with hard flaccid, okay? His symptoms have not improved. He said erectile dysfunction, depression, decreased sensation, and firm, painful flaccid. And um, he's had unsuccessful treatments, including pelvic floor therapy, medications, sex therapy, pelvic floor physiotherapy, nothing has worked. And so what they did is they, um, he actually started complaining of lower back pain with sciatica or basically nerve pain from your sciatic nerve, which runs down the back of your leg and, and pain along his, basically his butt bone or his sacrum. And they said, well, let's do an MRI. What did the MRI show? It showed an L5 or S1 protrusion, okay? And so basically disc dysfunction along the nerve roots in that area. So what did they do? They injected him with basically a, uh, a pain relieving or a cortisone and like an anti-inflammatory agent and his symptoms improved. So they actually took him in and did basically a minor surgery called a discectomy and he had significant improvement in all his symptoms in a year because he had that region three hard flaccid and not that region one or region two. So what happened with my client? Well, he had hard flaccid and eventually like came across my hard flaccid video and, and reached out to me and I said, you know, dude, do you have any kind of back pain or have you had any kind of accidents? And he said, yeah, I actually happened to have, I forgot what kind of traumatic injury, maybe like playing basketball or something. And I actually had imaging done and it showed that I have a protruding disc at L5. And I was like, dude, like, 
you think there's a coincidence that you just happen to have a protruding disc? And this is actually before I found this paper. And he said, well, you know, I talked to a neurosurgeon and I talked to my other doctors and they swore up and down that it had nothing to do with it. And um, I did come back to him with this paper, but I was like, like, Dude, you have nerve roots that come off of your pelvis. You know, your actual pudendal nerve roots are a little bit lower down in your sacrum, but he had an L5-S1, and that is absolutely where you can have some pudendal nerve involvement, which is what I thought was more so going on. And so basically, you know, I told him to print out this paper and take it back to those doctors, because I, I truly think they don't know what the hell they're talking about all the time. And like, most doctors are not as smart as you think they are, guys. Like, I'm not trying to crap on the doctor profession. Obviously, I am one, allegedly, for some people who, um, oh, hey, you're not a doctor. But, um, you know, doctors don't know everything, guys. And so when you, like, take the impetus amongst yourself to say, this is what I think is going on, I have back pain, maybe this is me, print out this paper and take this to him, guys. That goes for anybody with heart flaccid. Take a paper on heart flaccid, go through the symptoms, print it out, and take this to them so they actually can take you seriously rather than just saying, oh, here's some Viagra, get out of my office, basically, which they almost always do. So what are the takeaways from this paper? Before I get into that, guys, you know, we have our supplement vigor. So blood flow is crucial when you're dealing with heart flaccid or when you're just dealing with good pelvic floor erection health. I personally made the formula with my partner BD to maximize blood flow. It's getting great reviews on Amazon. It's available in Leviathan Subs. So please check that out if you're interested. I also have a detailed video breaking down every single ingredient in here and why it works. So what are the takeaways? Heart flaccid is, it is this very complex constellation of symptoms. It is, um, it's just very complicated. It's not just one thing, okay? And so I do think it's important that you have to understand the region or the zone of your problem to understand what the issue is and what the potential fixes are because they can vary, very dramatically, okay? It is important to know the specific anatomy involved, okay? Like I said, the client that came to me and I was like, dude, I think it's your back. And he was like, well, the doctors told me it wasn't. It's like, you know, what do you want me to tell you, guy, okay? The other thing is get imaging if you can. I know this is not as easy, especially depending on where you live and your insurance and whatnot. But like I've said it before, anybody in hard flaccid, what I would love to see as part of a standard workup would be an ultrasound, a Doppler ultrasound of the penis to check blood flow in and out, preferably in an erect state, okay, or an induced erection, and also an MRI with and without contrast of the lumbar spine, sacrum, and pelvis, or really just the lumbar spine and pelvis, because that would potentially show issues like this, and you can at least rule out that region three hard flaccid acid and work on some of the other things. I hope this helped guys. If you need to reach me through my Patreon doc kink, okay? I love the support guys. I'm just far too busy to respond to every single message that I get, okay? But I wish you well. Anybody suffering from heart flaccid, I hope you get over it quickly. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Help to grow this channel. I really, really appreciate it. And until the next one guys, peace and love.